Alright, um, in this video we're going to build us a pulse motor. Um, we're going to make our drive coil a little different and we're going to base it around the hybrid toroid transformer in which it has a uh, winding encased inside the core itself. This has shown some interesting but yet to be determined uh, results. We're still working on that. But um, I'm going to give it a go just using a, a straight core instead of a toroid core and here you'll see I just have a ferrite rod and I have one end cap glued on there already the other one we have to leave off to the end so what we're going to do is I'm probably going to wind three layers of this thicker wire along here first and um, then we're simply going to sit a tube over the top of it and fill that up with our um, mix, steel putty mix and the one I've used in previous experiments um, the first type of this coil was this DEVCON plastic steel putty and in this one here I actually used cast iron filings that I collect from our brake lathe machine at work it's reasonably fine and this was actually a uh, toroid I made from that and it's turned out quite well a few little bits and pieces because it's um, missing because it's stuck to the plastic someone forgot to wax the plastic before they poured it in but anyway um, so I just mixed up our two part epoxy and added our cast iron filings until such time as we got a reasonably dry mix you don't want it too wet dry the better less glue more steel um, and then I just rammed that in to our um, what we'll call mould which is just two pieces of PVC pipe um, one with the coarse inside diameter of the outside diameter of this and the other one had the outside diameter of the inside diameter of the core so um, that is a little larger than the first one as you can see that is a proper ferrite core I used in the first one and this one is a little larger but uh, that's going to be a separate experiment we'll get back to later so first I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wind the wire on and um, then we'll come back and have a look how it's going alright so we have um, two layers on there and that gave us a total of uh, 180 turns so um, I'm just documenting everything as I go and um, what I'm calling here our primary inductance um, that is the inductance before we put the rest of our core material over this winding just to see what effect it has when we do that so um, its primary inductance is 1.05 millihenries um, and we have a total of 180 turns on there all up 90 each way so um, I'm going to call this the hybrid pulse motor coil HPMC and uh, we'll see what happens I don't expect too much um, my toroid transformer is totally different in configuration to this whereas there's an endless loop and this is not um, as far as the core goes and the magnetic field so um, we will have a definitive field which is uh, different on one end than it will be on the other unlike that of a toroid uh, so next is to encase this with our um, steel putty and uh, once it's dry I will take a, um, another inductance measurement and see what happened with our inductance so um, I'll come back when that's done and uh, have a look how we're going okay so our um, inner coil is done and um, I went smaller in the um, tube diameter as I believe the other one was a bit large was going to make the um, coil diameter too large for what we were going to be using it for um, which is basically this setup here we use to try it out Alright, so uh, once I put the tube over and filled it up with our uh, 
liquid steel or steel putty our inductance went up to 1.22 millihenries so um, we had about a point uh, what a point one eight point one seven millihenry rise in inductance so um, that of course I'm measuring with this UB multimeter down here um, and that's what it's telling us so our inductance went up when we um, put the epoxy steel putty over the outside of our coil and um, I think it was believed before in the case of the HTT that the inductance should have went down but um, it didn't it actually went up in this case not sure about the HTT because I didn't measure it but uh, this time we we're doing it all so, um, now we're just going to go and stick our classical bifilar wind around the, our um, coil here and um, bring it up to our machine and see what happens alright um, it's as messy as it comes we have our um, drive coil and what is called the trigger coil now wound on together. Uh, classical by Phil R. Wind. Uh, in pulse motor world, one is known as the run coil, the other one known as the trigger coil. This third one just being our uh, little one we chucked in there to see what's actually happening in between the core. So. Um, who knows what it's going to do. So now what we're going to do is rig it up to our uh, previously built simple schoolgirl circuit and uh, see if we can actually get it to work to start with and then we'll have a look what kind of a waveform we've got across the uh, inner winding here. So um, I'll go ahead and mount it on our uh, little bit of wood here and come back when she's up and running and we'll have a look through it. Okay, so here's what we ended up with. Um, this LED down here is being driven by our internal coil. And of course our two external coils are set up in our um, SSG fashion. Um, and you'll see I have a microwave oven transformer coil here, or half of one, um, as you've seen in other projects. And that's going to be acting as a generating coil and also uh, we get some motoring effect from that one as well. The um, flyback or inductive kickback if you want to call it that um, goes through one half of this microwave oven transformer secondary and then it comes out of that and it goes through this LED which we're using for our diode and that goes back into the positive side of that cap. We then have this resistor here um, that is going to that little cap there uh, to the positive side and the two cap negatives uh, joined in parallel. So the inductive kickback uh, goes through our transformer coil through our LED goes back into this cap here um, and this cap here bleeds its energy through this 10 ohm resistor into our small cap here and the power for the pulse motor is drawn from that small cap so we've basically got a loop um, and like I said before this LED here is running off our internal coil uh, the yellow channel on our scope is across that internal coil or across that LED and the blue channel is across this other LED here and by shifting this um, you have to have it timed fairly right so when this coil switches off when the transistor switches off the flyback current goes through here At the same time the correct magnet is passing the coil and also adds to the um, output power of that uh, microwave oven transformer which in turn gets fed back into the cap that's feeding the system in the first place. So uh, we'll give her a little spin up at the 
moment you see we have multiple pulses um, that will keep happening until such time as we have reached running speed or I turn the pot down or I'm leaving the pot where it is because it's set pretty good at the moment so just by adjusting the timing on this coil here sliding it around our um, the position on our rotor you can see the LED either gets brighter or it gets duller and if I remove the coil all together it's not much fun so I'll bring it back into position and you can see that we are indeed adding um, energy output to that coil from our rotating magnets okay so that's the uh, odd looking messy waveform like I said, the yellow trace is across our LED from our inner coil, the one that's um, part of the core, and that blue trace is across that LED there. So both are glowing quite nicely, and uh, the motor runs fairly smooth. And there you have it. So once again, when the transistor switches off, we get the flyback from this coil. It's of course comes shooting out of the um, collector, then going through this coil here, which is also acting as a generator coil due to the passing magnetic fields. So both the collector current and the current generated from our rotor there is being sent back to our cap. The energy in that cap leads through this resistor into our little cap here, which is the cap that um, our system is drawing the power from directly. So that LED is quite bright, and the system runs quite smooth. The rotor is, uh, has eight magnets in it um, and they're oriented, orientated north-south, north-south, so alternating fields. And um, of course just our standard simple schoolgirl circuit. And she runs quite fine. Alright, so that's um, about it from me. around a little more with it but um, once again the internal coil seems to work quite well and of course we have our adjustment where we can increase or decrease power generated from that uh, microwave oven transformer coil okay guys thanks for watching and um, we'll see you next video